Hey, Muffy Trains! I wanted to do a video analysis update of some unusual stock options volume, but one of them that caught me really, you know, made me reminisce for a little bit. So I am going to do a little bit of a meditation because this is KBH Homes and it was on my unusual options volume screen. And just look at this. Oh man, a completely untouched chart. A perfect hit on a home builder. A home builder, frankly, I really don't know much about and how it's distinguished from other home builders. I made this prediction based on analyzing option screens, institutional uh, options activity, how they hedge positions with long gamma positions and then push the pile uh, while they raise the strike prices on their straddles and uh, especially do this with dividend stocks and I studied Elliott wave theory for a long time and that's how I was able to make this prediction on KBH home builders and during this time a lot of people were making lots of money saying that there was going to be a housing market crash another housing market crash that's what it always is 2008 is right around the corner and during this entire time people were Really, I don't think there's another way to say it, but prostituting themselves, saying there's going to be another housing market crash and telling people to get out of their mortgages, get out of their mortgages and sell your house during a very fast and very quick rate hiking cycle. Finch with this beautiful website X was full of people saying there's going to be a housing market crash, housing market crash, just because it was trendy. Just because it would get them lots of clicks, lots of likes, maybe some people in the comments saying you don't know crap and that's going to give them more uh, blue checks for their X payment. But the truth is someone who got into a nice mortgage in a home at really, really low interest rates, which would have been during the 2010s, they've made one of the most in the money craziest holds ever because the price of that home has exploded and they got that interest rate when it was damn near zero that mortgage rate when it was damn near zero and interest rates have exploded the best case results for interest rates are that they go down to three and a half three percent and then they start to rise again that means that that person in the 2010s who bought that, that house after the housing market crash with the, the very low interest rates and now housing prices have exploded and we've seen 80% of the money supply ever, all the dollars that have ever been created have been printed in the past couple of years. And so we've had this explosion in inflation and home prices have exploded. And so now in interest rates were jacked up one of the fastest rate hiking cycles ever it looks like they're gonna cool down. It looks like they're gonna cool down to three and a half, three percent towards late 2025, late 2026, and beyond. But after that, they could be on the rise again. And we could really see that that was a super cycle low and not just home building stocks, but the interest rates to acquire those homes. Now that is being in the driver's seat. That's something I, I would never let go of, personally. And that's obviously not investment advice. And the truth is, mortgage security rights are something that's really, really important to understand. Uh, but this is just one example of one sector of a perfect prediction that I just kind of go on with my life with now. All right. Okay, well, what about this one? This... You probably made a lot of money uh, selling discords on this, but I was pointing out there was an ETF that sold out of the money synthetic covered calls on this and that this stock itself had a sister. NVIDIA, during this time, I was saying, hey, this stock's sister, NVIDIA, has gone to Jupiter. It's in Uranus. And it's still down here. And institutions are buying strangles like they're going out of style.
And I think this is the one, two, three, four, five waves up in this low wave one and wave two. Bang! And then I had another ABC correction. I said, hey, this could be wave one and wave two again. Bang! Bang! And AMDY. Insane alpha. Massive yields. Honestly, just on its own. To me, that was more of an opportunity than selling discords. And what I have now, I'll, have, I'll tell you what I have right now. I got a list next to me called EOM Ape. You know what that stands for? End of month, I just need a list of ETFs to ape into. Those are the problems I got right now. Here are the, the names on that list, by the way. ISPY, zero DTE covered calls on the S&P. QQQY, zero DTE puts on the NASDAQ. SRHR, out of the money, covered calls on a stock picker's uh, view of the real estate market. An ETF that I'm not going to mention because I haven't looked. I'm going to look more into it. This is a really interesting ETF. The expense ratio is a little high, about 1.18, but it looks like it could be something that outperforms SVOL over the long term. It's ZIVB. It shorts midterm VIX futures. I'm going to look more into that. BALI, huge alpha from this ETF. And this ETF rebalances pretty frequently. And it's that's, a, that's from BlackRock. Large advantage. So I've been buying that one, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. The total returns on that one are stellar. HYGW, that's uh, covered calls, 1% to 2% out of the money covered calls on HYG. So holding those high-yield bonds and then selling the uh, 1% to 2% out of the money uh, covered calls on them once a month, and that's with BlackRock. I've got some for yield and diversification. One of them is going to actually be mentioned in this video, the underlying uh, KLIP clip. That's got a 9 to 10% total return, blindly averaging into it during a, a bear market, a pretty nasty bear market uh, for KWeb since its inception. Just something I've been interested in. EMCC, Emerging Markets Covered Call from Global X. That is covered calls on IEMG. And that's the ETF I've talked about. That's not for this video, though. That's a Emerging Markets Core ETF. A very interesting ETF. Very interesting wave count on that ETF. So I'm interested in blending those together. And like HYG and HYGW, IEMG pays a nice little dividend, too. Now, HIGH. This is credit spreads on three-month treasury bills. And it has a new competitor that's new from SoFi called THTA. The competitor has been outperforming a little bit, but high HIGH has been doing a little better. And then this is really just more for backing stability in case the US government really can't pay its debts. IGBH is interest rate hedged investment grade bonds. And LQDW is out of the money one to 2% covered calls on LQD. And then, I have two mystery ETFs. So I've got two mystery ETFs. Uh, we'll see if we can get some enthusiasm back in this channel. But, but this is just another one. Advanced Micro Devices. Now with AMDY, instead of discords that are no longer going to be around, it's AMDY that's going to pay massive out-of-the-money synthetic covered calls that I can reinvest to into whatever I want forever. To me, that was more important than discords and, and victory laps. But I'm a competitive person. Walmart had to have a, a stock split uh, because it soared to new highs and perfectly hit my equal X target. So I did have to uh, make this rather quickly because the stock split destroyed my chart. I promise I've got uh, photographic evidence for, the, for that on my X account. As always, give that a follow. I've noticed YouTube giving me a little traffic lately uh, with the algorithm. What's going on? Coinbase, right? And so what, what was that stock again? Walmart, Walmart, KBH Home, Advanced Micro Devices, completely different sectors. And they've all got much different explanations. Advanced Micro Devices is AI, just like NVIDIA, just like, and, and by the way, before I get into Coinbase, there was another one. I was making a very similar argument 
when Adobe, and I, th th these are just casual. This is so casual for my page. But Oracle had exploded to all time highs. And I said, hey, Adobe is finishing an ABC correction. And I just posted about it. I, I didn't even mark it up. I just said, when Adobe was down here, I said, hey, Oracle's way up here. It looks like Adobe could be, and just from the slow, one, two, three, four, five ways up the next one to go follow Oracle uh, to all time highs. That's not quite there. IGV was another one the entire the entire ETF I was like look this this is going to follow CrowdStrike completely untouched chart bang IGV the entire software sector the entire software sector CrowdStrike so casual I don't even bore my my followers were trying to remind them of these look at this look at this this is something this is something that if I was here for trophies, if I was here for trophies, shops closed. You know what I mean? Like, but I'm not here for trophies. And I, and I, ne I was never here for trophies. The market doesn't come with, with, with trophies. And that's why I'm able to do this. That's what people sacrificed when they accepted that money. This is why I'm able to do this. Because I went through Biden inflation too. I went through the the 2020 events too. And I wanted to learn what was really moving the market. Because we were being told wild events were moving the market. And now, about a year and a half, two and a half years later, I got an awful lot of evidence. It looks like it's computer algorithms and options. And, and then a lot of these stories are known about in advance. And I'm even getting to the point I'm even getting to the point where I'm now telling my followers what the narrative is. Just in case Elliot Wave is too boring, I'm now, in case you missed it, I'm telling my followers what the narrative is. Because, you know, charts are too boring for the masses. I get it. So I showed how Kodak Black doing this ridiculous performative ritual was signaling to the MMs he threw rocks like rock bottom at a photographer. His name is Kodak, like Eastman Kodak, and this is a one, two, three, four, five waves impulse. And I had seen in December, I had seen in December when he got arrested that they were buying unusual options volume on Eastman Kodak. So I could tell they were syncing it up with this, and then as soon as they let him out, and he threw rocks at that photographer, in an example of institutionalization, which is basically a way of describing the systematic oppression that people of color in the United States of America uh, are subject to, to the point where, in some instances, as Kodak Black says in his song, he kept going back like a revolving door. So he has an album called Institution. And on that album, there's a song called Rock Bottom. So he was throwing rocks at a photographer when he got out of jail. And one of the things Kodak's unfortunately known for is every time he goes to jail, he comes back. And it's kind of a bad example to set for young people to look up to him. That, hey, this cool guy, he goes back and from jail all the time, but he's still pretty cool. And guess what? Now, potentially, we have tons of evidence with not only the unusual options volume activity that they've taken, but now I have now made a prediction, completely uncannily showing that he is a he's a puppet. That this stuff is that this stuff that people talk about, celebrities being puppets, performative rituals. I have gathered so much evidence that this is real. So to be honest, I'm not even telling you guys a lot of the stuff that I see just because I know you guys can't accept it. I know you guys can't accept the reason that Scott's Miracle Grow, all the institutions, knew to buy it this week. I know you guys can't accept that. I tried to show you with Kodak Black. I, 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 you think every institution in the world is doing Elliott Wave? They're not. Okay? So the smart money, they can't just signal. They can't just signal to themselves. They can't just buy it themselves. They're all in a network. They're all in a club. The illuminated ones. 
So they got to tell people in the, the illuminated ones communicate in a wide open channel. And I saw their signal this week for Scott's Miracle Grow, and I was just like, they're not ready for it. Kodak, fortunately, gave me a little more credibility with using this to say, this is how they're signaling to say, hey, look at this. They're casually getting the exact name of the ticker in the news, and they're making it a very dumb performative ritual. But Scott's Miracle Grow, you guys want to know how they signal this? I can tell you. Till then, the Elliott Wave is clean. But this stuff is serious. And I took it seriously. Now I got serious money. Now I've got serious money for life. I've got cash flow for life. I got, I got serious money, so I got silly ETFs with dumb names. Like, I got silly lists right now with dumb names like end of month ape. Yeah, I just got to blindly jump into these because I got too much money to invest. And this is really just the end of month one. I'm working on the mid month one and I'm working on, the, there might even be three, to be honest. Exponentially growing, more backing forever. And it's only ever gonna fail if the, the US dollar collapses completely. And I even have a, <laughs> I even have a solution to that. Anyway, it's a O-U-N-Z, by the way. It's completely legal. That's an ETF, not ounces of anything, O-U-N-Z is an ETF I've researched that I'm interested in. Um, if I was really worried about the U.S. dollar collapsing, O-U-N-Z is an ETF from Vanek that offers delivery, physical delivery of the ETF. So that's something I'm considering. Uh, if I was really concerned about the U.S. dollar, now there is the 1933 Gold Caesar Act, but these are the type of things that I'm, focusing on right other people with regular jobs i mean that happens they're screwed anyway they're anyway the market don't come with trophies ba, 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 ba. this stuff is not a love song this is a love a stripper on the meek rug song this a fm boys forever hold a grudge song Pop some sham, pop some effing champagne in the tub song, just because song. Damn, what's the move? Can I tell the truth? If I was doing this for you, then I'd have nothing left to prove. If I was doing this for you, I'd have nothing left to prove. If I was doing this for you, I have nothing left to prove. This is how I'm free now. This is how I get to look at this. And I get to know what's about to happen to Moderna. I know it's not going to be fun, but I'm going to make money from it. I'm going to own, and I do own, mRNA. And I'm going to blend it, and I do blend it with mRNY. I'll be making money when this happens again. We'll talk about another stock in this video, but if I was doing this for you, I'd have nothing left to, to prove. I wasn't doing this for discord or sales. I was doing this to become the greatest technical analyst to ever live, the greatest quantitative investor to ever live, and be a level of financially free that actually defines the American dream. Because they're trying to take away this country. And they're going to tell us we, the, the dream doesn't exist. The dream's still alive. And I'm living it. They ain't have an award for that. They don't have no award for that. Trophies. Trophies. And they don't have an award for that. This shit don't come with trophies. This shit don't come with trophies. And if it did, there wouldn't be any envelopes left for me to open. 
This is the next one. They're trying to turn this into a religion now. Go make your Discord money on this. Go make your Discord money on this. Turn this into a religion now. Probably better than the sell your house religion. Anyway, there ain't no trophies. So I score these touchdowns, and I'm like Larry Fitzgerald. I just got to give the ball to the ref. So let's look at some of this unusual options volume for today. My preferred screens, I found a few. United Microelectronics and Hymax Technologies. Hymax Technologies still on this. Maybe that was on the other one. Hi, Max Technologies. I saw it on this screen or one of these screens when there's about 30 minutes left in the trading day. It looks like it's not on this screen anymore. So I'll get the other two ETFs and then I'll just uh, mark up Hymax Technologies, and we'll look at the options volume. Moo, M-O-O, -O, uh, was one that I noticed right off the bat. 1,448% uh, unusual options volume, all biased to the call side. Um, we'll look at that, or mostly. It looks like they got a few. They got nine in there uh, at the close. MCHI, China ETF. I think I saw a very similar to this one to one to this yesterday. And so Hymax Technologies, let's make sure we have those numbers for China. MCHI, I think I saw a very similar reading to this yesterday, but today it had 280% unusual options volume, 97% bias to the upside. And then stocks will get Hymax Technologies in there. So the volatility in Greeks, let's see what may have triggered this today. A thousand on the front month out of the money, not much there. 621, a little bit, 920, there we go. 2,302 times 56. Two thousand three hundred and fifty-two times fifty-six, and I do not have my calculator out, but that's two thousand three hundred and two calls to the upside, and it looks like that was what may have triggered that reading I saw. So I'll just mark up Hymax Technologies and show you guys why I thought it was interesting. What is this stock? It's an ADR. I think it has a similar theme. So this is a foreign semiconductor stock. And the reason that I was going to group it with UMC is because United Microelectronics is also a foreign semiconductor stock. So that's going to be a theme that we're going to see on the screens for today. Hymax Technologies, Inc. designs, develops, and markets semiconductors that are critical components of flat panel displays. The company's principal products are display drivers for large size TFT LCD panels, which are used in desktop monitors, notebook computers, and televisions, and display drivers for small and medium size TFT LCD panels, which are used to which are used in mobile handsets and consumer electronics products such as digital cameras, mobile gaming devices, and car navigation plays. In addition, the, the company is expanding its product offering to include LCD TV, chipset solutions, and LCO LCOS micro uh, displays. So 8.30 interest coverage ratio, a little bit of a dividend paid once a year. 
profitable profit margins, nice ROA, nice ROE, and then looking down here, institutional shareholders and insider shareholders, not much to make of that. So let's just look at the wave count, foreign semiconductor uh, related name, very similar to United Microelectronics. So that's the connection I was making there. Let's see what, uh, what country was this? It is based out of Taiwan. I think UMC is also based out of Taiwan. So that's interesting. So we have a, a big uh, Asian theme. Taiwan and China are going to be big themes of these screens today. Looking at this large wave count for HIMX. Large wave one. Slash wave A from this low one, two, three, four, and five. That's the same, the same method that perfectly nailed a home builder when all the experts were saying housing crash and all this. Now, to be more precise with this subdivision, I'm going to measure this. Are they the same length? They are the same length. So that's good. Some wave theorists might say this is wave A and it's connecting with an expanded flat to wave B. Whenever wave a is the length of wave c it's generally going to be the exact same conclusion and it's actually going to be more con conservative i think to say that this is wave a wave b and wave c but really it's just the more arbitrary if they both work they both work but i think this is wave a wave b wave c nothing to debate the purest about i'm sure And then from this low, potentially a wave A, or wave one, and a wave two. So this wave C down here ended a large wave one of a wave A. So this could be wave two of wave B. And then what this count is really possibly suggesting is that it's a little too conservative to have this label labeled as a wave three or a wave C. And the reason that I say that is because wave, if this was a wave C, this has already reached the length of wave A places the wave B low. So maybe that's not the most accurate count, but sometimes, especially with a really growthy stock, wave C can actually be significantly further than the length of wave A places the wave B low. So for a higher beta stock, the 61.8% retracement. The 161.8% extension can be used as a very wide wave C target. So that's why I'm still going to keep this as a wave C possibility because this topped at about 18 or 19 and wave C could go all the way up to 25 and still satisfy the rules of being a wave C. And then from this, this is really a, I don't think that one's subjective. That's pretty clear. B, ooh, C. And then from this low, wave one and wave two. So the MMs took a bull bet. Doesn't mean they're going to be right, but it's a. I saw an unusual options volume. I think I could, I don't have the exact bias to the call side. I'm pretty sure it was significantly biased to the call side, and it was about 460, 470 percent. I can't look at uh, page two on these bar chart screens, but the invalidation is very clear. Above 4.83, this could be a significant wave one, wave two. 
wave one and wave two, and it could get very explosive for a Taiwanese semiconductor stock. And notice another, isn't it interesting now, right? All these coincidences. Well, it's actually a coincidence that United Microelectronics has also appeared on the screen. So how many unusual options volume did United Microelectronics have? Let's just refresh. UMC had 460% unusual options volume and it was 99% to the call side. Anecdotally, that's very similar to what I remember Hymex being. United Microelectronics serves, specializes in providing foundry services for high performance semiconductor applications. Its core competency lies in its ability to produce high yield integrated circuit wafers manufactured on a per customer basis. The company draws its distinction from industry leading technology. In addition to wafer manufacturing, it, its customers benefit from services such as extensive IP resources, free of charge design libraries, and full front end and back end support. So we got 27% profit margin, 11% ROA and a 17% ROE. Uh, institutional and insider shareholders are negligible. And once again, the dividend rather inconsistent. Uh, priced for a little bit of little bit of growth. So it's a profitable company. It's also headquartered in Taiwan. It's also semiconductor related, and it also had unusual stock options volume. And I've already got this stock, this chart pretty marked up. I was actually talking about seeing this in a previous video and I went brain, I had a brain fart, but yeah, this is uh, my UMC chart. I do think that this is going to get ready to go. This might be a little confusing. These are ju this just time fibs. I connected the weekly chart, the monthly chart, sorry, this wave one low with this wave one high. It gave a time fib of wave two, which ended up being the wave three high. But now it looks like this time fib wave three is going to signal wave one, wave two, wave one, wave two, wave three of wave three potentially signaling a bull market until October of 2029. So that's a little long term, a little woo woo. And it definitely uh, could be completely crap if it goes below 6.71. So I'll call that the invalidation for now. I do think that's the proper invalidation. But United Microelectronics, very similar, uh, just kind of a similar theme, very similar theme to UMC. And then in the short term, I'll get rid of that little Joe bar chart. You're pimping me now. One, two, three, four, five waves up, wave one, ABC wave two, wave one, wave two, wave three. Interesting for bar chart. Let's look at some ETFs. ETFs, exchange, traded funds. Moo. There's a stock twits legend named Moo. He's the perma bear, but everyone loves him. Everyone loves the perma bears, the perma bull. I'm just kidding. I'm not a perma bull. I promise. I was saying some really dumb stuff like this is a long term cycle for Bitcoin, and this is a long term cycle for the NASDAQ, and this is a long term cycle for the XLI. Oh, but as many of you guys know, I, the great puppy trades, invented long term Elliott wave cycles. Uh, to spread all my, you know, little little theories I have. I I had a long term theory that XLI was in these these long term cycles, and people called me a permabull. And now Nvidia, Microsoft, and the Nasdaq, and well, I guess just pull out a big list of the stock market. But you guys know how that went. Moo. Moo's a lot cooler about it. Moo, I, I usually see Moo take his own, puts his money where his mouth is. He's not selling a Discord. Moo, volatility in Greeks. It's an agribusiness ETF. We'll get into the top holdings. Let's look at this money. 
So we had a bunch of cows lit on fire, and then just like an episode of South Park, they destroy a bunch of cows in the panhandle, and then they uh, where the panhandle has all these cows and all these wind farms, and then we saw them buy Unusual Options Volume 500 to 600%, entirely biased to the calls on Wind Energy ETF Fan, and now they're buying Unusual Options Volume on Moo. So yeah, this might be one reason why people need to wake up to this, because a lot of people think that the real reason the fires stopped in the panhandle is because God, uh, God uh, brought the snow, right? God brought the snow, but did God bring the wildfires? It's just, um, you know, and for anyone who's interpreting that as an anti-religious message or anything like that, it's more of just the, the people who tell you to go sin on Saturday are the same ones who tell you you need to repent for it on Sunday and both times you got to give them money. Let's just say that. 1003 calls bot on Moo, the 73 out of the money call, little out of the money. Now it's basically at the money. 1003 times 170 is 170,000 and some change on this agribusiness ETF. Who's in this agribusiness ETF? Zotis, John Deere, Corteva, Nutrien, which I've marked up, Archer Daniels Midland, Tyson Foods. Sounds like things could get very expensive. Food prices getting very expensive. And I also had a video recently. It was my one. It was my video. It was my video last week, exact, exactly seven days ago, uh, that was about... The baby formula stock, the baby formula stock in that video was going to go up. And now they're taking the the Moo ETF, the agribusiness ETF. They're about to take it to the moon. All right. That's probably why I'm not so big. Anyway, Moo, pretty count, pretty bullish MMs. Will one plus one equal two or fish? Only time will tell. 108 plus 3A, 3, 3, 6. This is 91.30 and 100.22. So that's our Fib Zone. We're at the 100 to 161.8 percent extension, and then that's going to give a little bit of fib confluence for. Let's see, let me see, let's see. It's going to give a little bit of fib confluence for the downside levels. Forty two point five two is this low. And then one oh eight one oh nine point nineteen. Hmm? Did I do that right? One oh nine point nineteen. Hmm. Y'all were gonna let me have that wrong. Come on, chat, wake up. Oh, perfect. Woo, that's pretty. All right, 67. It's a little tight, but I think that's the just right kind of stopping and validation. Very pretty count. That doesn't mean it'll hit, but I think these MMs know what they're doing, personally. I think that's way too close of an expiration. Why might they take that really close expiration if this is a long-term cycle? Well, the big money has a little bit of power over these less liquid markets and sometimes when these less liquid ETFs are getting their their turn $170,000 bets that's a sign the MMs are really getting ready I saw them straddling and strangling FMC it looks like they've got a whole heist plan we're gonna hear all this stuff think about all this stuff that we're gonna hear about why food prices went up assuming I'm right which I definitely could not be and assuming these you know and we're gonna hear so much 
reasons for why this happens. And I just think it's a little more important than selling discords. And certainly if I was selling discords or any of that crap, I would have never figured any of this out. I'd be a, a salesman like everyone else in finance and journalism. I'd never be doing what I love and I'd, I'd hate my life. Instead, it's the exact opposite. But... If we're over 67, I think they're looking for this agribusiness ETF to go one, two, three. And on the long term, I also think this won't be the prettiest for the video, but I think that this could be wave one of a large, it could look like this. So this could be a, a big cycle for agribusiness. I mean, this is a pretty big deal. This is a huge deal. This this kind of sector, I don't know. This is a really niche sector, but it's also a huge sector, and its relationship to the price of everything is is wild. What would what would happen in a situation where agribusiness and energies went up significantly, and the price of equities fell? What if that happened? I'm not saying that's my forecast. I'm just saying, what if that happened? Well. People's 401k balances and their Roths and all this, all those baby boomers who are trying to retire, their balances would go down significantly. So that'd be a very hard time to withdraw when the, the balance is down pretty significantly. And at the same time, businesses, uh, expenses, like agribusiness expenses and energies and all that could be going up significantly. So would that, that would be a very hard time can't withdraw from the 401k because the market's down, can't, but you actually need more money than was planned for uh, because expenses and, and stuff is rallying through the roof. And so that's that's kind of the problem when, when there's this huge penalty to withdraw and there's this huge penalty to to take profits and stuff and the, the, the funds are even saying, the forms are even saying, hey, just, just take out a loan against this. Okay, now interest rates are five and a half percent. So if I want to if I want to take a loan out against my 401k, I'm paying 5% interest rate. That's double the yield of the S&P and if the stock market falls, then you know, it's just it's just all ridiculous. And so there are situations people never ever ever realize gains. And just from an anecdotal standpoint, from an anecdotal standpoint, I'm <laughs> Not, I'm not like having a. I was spinning like I was kicking myself because of the way that I took a little bit of partial profits on Bitcoin. I was kicking myself that I might not be able to buy a drip in one account before the yield max ex dividend date and not have all those gains immediately realized um, because I, I think that the funds that I'm gonna buy are gonna recover uh, with the underlying after the dividend drop and the market's efficient, all that. I, I was freaking out about that I wasn't going to buy something. And the next day, I was going to have the gains realized. I was going to have to wait 30 days. And so I was even thinking, well, should I even buy this at all? Should I just wait for something that I'm going to realize in two weeks instead? Damn. <laughs> and and I've, I've talked to people. They've never realized a, 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 a penny. They've never realized a penny. They've got all this. In, it's, in a, it's in fantasy land. It might as well be in the fairly odd parents world where all the fairies live and you know jordan von strangle can just destroy that that big rainbow anyway I, I don't think anyone in their late 30s or 40s got that um unless they watch shows with their kids hey shout out to parents baby formula price is gonna explode moo go into the moon tell the mothers hey you didn't hear that from me. You didn't hear that from me. But expenses are about to explode. Expenses are about to explode. 280% unusual options volume on MSCI. And I saw this exact same, very similar trade taking. Less, look at all this money they spent. Huge amount of money. 2,518 times 120. I don't have my calculator up. So I'm going to just do that math. Mentally, we're talking about... About three hundred thousand dollars, roughly, on pretty far out of the money, pretty far out of the money calls on five seventeen. 
24 expiration, and they followed up with 5,000. Oh, I should be able to do this one off the top of my head. 5,000 times 25. 125,000. Yes, 125,000. So this is about four hundred fifty five hundred thousand dollars Pretty far out of the money calls. Expiring 5-17-24 on MSCI. But I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to do MSCI. I'm going to do K-Web because K-Web is where I'm really interested in. I already have it marked up. Started out before. Nice little pop today. And it's got an ETF that has uh, covered calls on it. So I like to blend K-Web with Clip. It's it's a really interesting. There's only a few other examples of being able to do this in the American market. Doing this in a foreign market is a little interesting because the the volatility of these Chinese tech stocks is very high. The upside of these Chinese tech stocks is also very high. So I've been getting paid uh, pretty huge dividends to wait and now k-web is really turning around i'm gonna start buying k-web with the clip and the clip premiums notice that the clip premiums are going to be going up the klip premiums are going to be going up keep watching that that might be a little interesting of an indicator if the premiums from klip go up it might be a sign the options market is a little more bullish and biasing skew to the upside. It's biasing premium to the upside. Anyway, we could see some inflated call premiums. I'm interested in K-Web and Clip. I own uh, both of them and have a great weekend.